Last night was a great opportunity again for the pitching to showcase themselves, but also we saw on the other side, Kyle Schwarber starts things off the right way. I know Rob Thompson was interviewed during the game and mentioned how they have this 1-0, we're up 1-1-0 up whenever Kyle Schwarber takes the mound for the leadoff because they have in their mind Kyle's going to deliver them a run from the opening gates, and rightfully so because you look at the numbers of Kyle Schwarber, remarkable. Last night, he hits his 18th home run of the season, his eighth leadoff home run of the season. That was his 600th career RBI. And he, as they talk about, gives the team energy, gives that, gets them going from the jump. To have the hot start that they always typically do, I won't say always, but usually do, Kyle Schrober is a big reason behind that. His second game back from his groin injury, three RBIs in two games, and now continues to uh, start things off the right way with that opposite field home run that we saw and also, as Sarah Langs was pointing out for that home run, it was a, in a position. The leadoff home run he hit was on a pitch that was 0.98 feet from the center of the plate. The fifth furthest outside pitch he's homered off of, including the playoffs. Kyle Schwarber, I feel like it's a quiet thing because I don't think we even talk about him or give as much credit as we should. But he has continued to show, A, why he's great as the leadoff, and B, why he's such a big part of this team, especially in his return. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I was skeptical of, <laughs> of Schwarber in the leadoff spot, a, a little bit old school in that respect. Uh, in terms of a team, I just thought, you know, you have you have Trey Turner, mm -hmm. uh, you know, more of a prototypical leadoff guy. Um, how are you going to have this big home run hitter leading off? But it works, and you see it uh, on nights like last night, um, where he just immediately immediately jumps on the pitcher and the Phillies have a one nothing lead. Yeah. Um, and you, you've heard some pitchers talk about how it's just like a dagger uh, to right off the bat go down one, nothing like that. And then that's not all he offers out of the lead off position mm -hmm. either. He, you know, his on-base percentage is fantastic. Uh, the new slim down version of him seems to, <laughs> you know, he's, he's not, he's not Trey Turner on the base paths, but he's not clogging up those base paths mm -hmm. either. He can, he can go first to third on single and, uh, you know, he's pretty fast for his size. So I've, I've really come around pretty much 180 on, on Schwerber as a leadoff hitter. Uh, very much willing to admit when I'm wrong. And I uh, <laughs> was wrong about that because because he's been he's been fantastic. I think a lot of people are. And uh, for anybody, it's okay to admit. Let us know in the chat. This is a safe space. We'll, we'll make this our Phillies confessional. If you at some point did not want Kyle in the leadoff, we've all at some point, I think, said it. I know we talked about it a lot on the show, especially in the offseason. Should they tinker with somebody else, Trey Turner, Bryson Stott in leadoff um, versus Kyle Shorby because of his speed was a big issue of him. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets on base and he's a lot of times you would see Trey Turner or someone catching him right, almost right. because he was <laughs> so right slow. Him. Yeah. And it's like, come on, come on, come on. So I know one of the issues was like with how slow he's been, he should not be at leadoff. Um, and I know K-Red, I appreciate the, the listen, again, safe space. We, safe all, we, space. we all make mistakes. K-Red's like, yep, I was wrong. A lot of us were. Uh, for Kyle Schwarber, though, to be able, as John, John Peace is bringing up a great point. The Phillies are 22-4 and four when Schwarber leads off with a home run for them. A big part of the success of this season has been the Phillies jumping out on opponents early. And as you mentioned, imagine you go into all this prep for a game. You know, when you go as an athlete, and I can tell you myself, you go through so much, especially game day, your routine, your meals, your film, your talking, your game planning, your warming up, the music's going, you're excited to go, and then boop! First, first pitch <laughs> of the game, <laughs> ball that here. Gone, like yeah. all that prep, it's like, damn, what did I do all that for? Yeah. To then yeah. find yourself chasing the game 1-0. And this team, with how well their pitching staff has been alone, you know once you go down, it's hard to, to come back. It's This team, and I, have, I don't have the number in front of me, but they haven't given up a lot of leads. No. And it's been hard to come back when they do go, when you do go down against the Phillies. So for Kyle Schwarber, I know it was tweeted out that he's got – um, a lot of history that he's in the mix of. So the history for the most leadoff home runs in a season as a Philly, 2022, Kyle Schwarber had seven. 2024, Kyle Schwarber with eight. In 2007, it was J. Roll with nine. And then 2023 was Kyle Schwarber with 11. He is literally dominating for Philly's history of most leadoff home runs. The single season record across Major League Baseball 
2003, Alfonso Soriano with 13. So Kyle Schubert continues to put himself in some great company with the amount of leadoff home runs he's hit. And as we keep talking about, it's such a boost for this team when you have the ability to jump on pitchers, rattle them from the very first pitch, and mm -hmm. take the lead. And now you're, you're excited. It's contagious. It goes through the entire team. That energy is contagious of the bullpen, the dugout, the fans. I was watching at home. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, it's game yeah. time because Kyle's at the plate and he yeah. hit home run. It's just, it's <laughs> just electric. And, uh, you know, it's not just the leadoff home runs either. It, the bottom of the order has been doing a pretty good job lately of, of getting on base in front of Schwarber as he, as he circles back uh, to the number one spot. Um, I think in the opening game against the Dodgers, um, before the Phillies really blew it open, the, the first run scored. I think mm -hmm. we're uh, we're on we're on Schwarber driving in runners from second and third. I think I think yeah. that's the game where the seven eight nine hitters went something like seven for nine. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to do that at the bottom of the lineup in front of Kyle Schwarber and give him some some runners to drive in, mm -hmm. and then after that happens, you've got to deal with with the heart of the Phillies order. It's a tough team to beat. And like you said, Renee, once if they jump on you and they're ahead. It's really tough to come back because yeah. you've got some, you've just got some horses in that bullpen with the RAs 1.3, 1.5, uh, Kirkering, Strom, um, you know, just the whole group. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's really really tough to to mount <laughs> a comeback against this Philly squad. It is, and as you mentioned, Tuesday night, I know I had pulled the numbers. It was seven runs that were scored by the bottom of the of the order. Johan Rojas, Brandon Marsh, and Rafael Marchand contributed seven hits, three RBIs, one walk, one K, and they scored seven runs. And a big reason they scored those runs was that RBI that we saw for Kyle Schwarber, uh, RBI double that he had. He's He literally adds that extra element that not only can he be great in the leadoff role, but a great point you bring up. If seven, eight, and nine are hitting and getting on base, you've got – Speed there. You've got guys that can – we've seen the variety, as you talked about, that versatility, bunting, small ball. It's singles, doubles, triples. Uh, Alec Bohm had, like, his first double last night. Like, it's been so many different ways that they've been able to get hits. It's not just home run or bust. So now if you had the production from 7-8-9 with Kyle Schuerber coming behind them, that's how you end up winning 10-1 against the Dodgers on Tuesday night because yeah. you're, you're driving in runs, and the Dodgers had left – what was it, 12 guys stranded on Tuesday. The Phillies were great with runners in scoring position. You know, they did a phenomenal job with the 10 RBIs on the day of just, you know, get, keeping the inning alive, capitalizing on the mistakes of the Dodgers, driving runners in, and Kyle Schwarber at the leadoff, following Brandon Marsh, who's been playing well, Johan, who I know we know is uh, injured now, but will be back, hopefully, uh, possibly. Rafael Marsh on whoever it is at the bottom of the order, Garrett Stubbs, whoever it is, if they get a hit, you can count on Kyle Schwarber to come behind them and really do a good job of getting them home. Yeah, and then if if pitchers want to pitch around Schwarber a little bit, good luck to them then. You go ahead. Yeah. He'll take the walk, you know, uh, among the league leaders and walks. He'll take the walk, and then he'll set it up. You got Trey Turner behind mm -hmm. him. And if you want to get past Trey Turner, then you got Bryce Harper to go with. Yeah. And then, you know, boom, uh, near, the, near the top of the league in RBIs. There's, there's no breaks in the lineup when they're healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, no breaks in the lineup. Great starting rotation. Great bullpen. Uh, that's a good. That's a good way to win a lot of games. Oh yeah, that's definitely a recipe <laughs> for success. <laughs> to say when the, the least. whole team is good. <laughs> we like that. We, we love like to that. see the whole team good. Um, that makes things a lot easier to say the least. We all city like the mayor. 